Sometimes you're fire, sometimes you're a ghost, sometimes you can't give me all the things that I love the most. Sometimes you're a queen, sometimes you're a curse, and sometimes a whole lot worse. Yeah, nobody's quite, nobody's quite like you. Hello everyone and welcome back to Blue Hell Worldwide here on Sean Does EFM. I hope you are doing well and today. In episode number 26, we take on both Club America and Santos Laguna in the league, and we'll see how we're doing at the end of the episode, as we still then might have a chance at trying to get out of the Super League 1 and into the Premier League, potentially. But if you're looking forward to this episode, and there will also be a youth intake at the end as well, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well so you are notified when more football manager content does drop on the channel but yesterday we took on arsenal in the europa league round of 32 if you missed that i will leave a link to it above my head top right corner unfortunately we just went out in that competition and that now means that our focus is entirely on the league and we will catch you guys up now on highlights from the games that we have played since the end of yesterday's episode and first off we had a home game against one of the top three teams in Corinthians. This was our most difficult game left in the league part of the season. Now, unfortunately, we got off to a bit of a bad start. Rahimi making his way down the right-hand wing here in the 14th minute, just as somehow is able to get that past Melia. The first shot, I think, came off the post there, so a little bit unlucky there, and they were 1-0 up at half time. But then in the second half, we did start to kick into gear. A bit of luck for us there that time, and Busio is able to put the ball in the bottom left corner to equalise things at the 55 minute mark and then with 10 minutes to go who else but the man himself who we signed at the start of yesterday's episode Yusuf Makoko given too much space towards the near post there and we pick up a very good win 2-1 against one of those top three teams who prior to today's episode had a bit of a gap on the rest at the top of the table that is not so much of a thing now but a good 2-1 win for us and Yusuf Makoko has still scored in every game that he has played for us here since joining Sporting Kansas City. And then we faced an away trip to Monterey in Mexico. This was a real turgid game, not a very good one at all. But we were able to escape with a winning goal in the 93rd minute. Luke Bolton, when we went more direct, playing one out for Yusuf and Makoko. Gonzalez really should have kept that out, but the ball found the back of the net, and we escaped with a 1-0 win. Stats-wise, we were the better team, but it just took us until the very last minutes to get a win in that game. And again, Yusuf Makoko on the score sheet to give us another three points. And off the back of that, we had a few games against the teams right down at the bottom of the table. First off, it was that team, in fact, in Atletico Nacional of Colombia. And we got off to a good start in this game at the core of an hour mark. Remy Walter driving forward is able to play a ball there to Jala. He picks out Makoko. Really nice finish into that top left corner. Another goal for the young German to put us 1-0 up. Then we got a penalty 10 minutes later, which Remy Walter put into the top right corner, more or less to give us a 2-0 lead about halfway through the first half. But then Atletico Nacional struck back at the 35-minute mark. It was Kuzlak there putting the ball away to make it 2-1. And then with 10 minutes to go in the game, it was a bit of a quiet spell after that, but Forey makes his way down the left here, is able to put a ball across, finds A, and he makes it 2 all with 10 minutes to go. So it was a little bit squeaky bum time for us then. But off the very next highlight, we played a ball forward there. For Shalloway, Makoko's first shot's blocked, but then he slide tackles that into the back of the net to give us the 3 2 lead. And then in the dying seconds, yet again, we were able to absolutely seal this at 4 2. Ayongo putting a ball across. Remy Walter just pouncing on that, putting it away quite nicely in the bottom left corner. And after a little bit of a scare, we come away with a 4 2 win in Colombia, thanks to a double from Yusuf and Makoko again and Remy Walter. So in the end, a pretty good performance in stat wise. I think that was a fairly well-deserved result. And off the back of that, another team who were down towards the bottom of the table, the team that came up with us from Super League 2 last season in FC Dallas in another game where we got off to a nice start in the third minute. Johnny Russell making his way down the left-hand flank, which was interesting. Plays the ball forward to Makoko, just rockets that into the roof of the net to give us a 1-0 lead nice and early, and it only got better from there in the eighth minute. Russell with the throw in. Wintel back to Zeus, he pops the ball over the top here for Ayongo and he lashes that into the bottom right corner. One of the first goals there for our left back, I think he hasn't scored too many this season 
if he already has. So that made it 2-0. Then at the core of the hour mark, we really put the game beyond doubt. Felix Metra off the Zussi ball makes it 3-0. And then a couple of minutes before halftime, we made it for Metra back out to Ayongo, puts the ball in. Johnny F and Russell give him far too much space at the far post, and he gets a goal. And that is how it ended. Not much happening in the second half of that game, but we hit the game well under wraps by then. Another very good performance and a very good 4-0 win over our American counterparts. And then we have one more game going into today's episode, but unfortunately, the goal-scoring run for both the club and Makoko did end with a nil-all draw at home against Gremio. It was a fairly even game. They had the slightly higher XG, albeit they did get a red card with a core of an hour to go, but we couldn't make the most of it. So our winning run ended there, but we did get a point out of that game. Probably a fair result. We certainly had some chances once the red card did happen, but couldn't put any of them away. So on a very good run of form since the end of yesterday's episode, and what that means for the league is we are still in fifth, but we do have games in hand on the teams above us, and we are 12 points behind Flamingo, so still have a lot of work to do if we're going to try and win this league and enter a promotion playoff. But as I said, if we can win those games in hand and get up to 61 points, then we wouldn't be that far away, and if those sort of teams slipped up, we wouldn't be without a hope of trying to win the league and then try and earn promotion to the Premier League in a playoff. But Certainly we've put that relegation battle beyond doubt. That is not an issue anymore. It's just trying to see if we can somehow, after the terrible start we had to the season here at Sporting Kansas City, sneak our way towards winning this title, which would be very surprising and unlikely. But we're still on with a chance, so we're going to try and cling to that hope here in today's episode with a couple of wins, hopefully. But the main reason for that good runner form, we got him in yesterday's episode, Yusufa Makoko here on loan. And you can see he hasn't improved too much from yesterday's episode, but his form is just ridiculous. You look at his season stats, he has played seven games for us now, 11 goals. The guy has been an absolute freak for us. You look at his XG as well. It's not actually that high. Ignore the UEFA European Championship under 21 qualifier because that wasn't one of our team's games, but his average rating for us as well. He has just been nothing short of superb and hopefully he can keep that form up all the rest of the season, get back in goal scoring touch after that Gremio game, and we could continue to find ourselves climbing the league ladder. But going into today's episode, they are back-to-back -back games. I don't think they were when we ended yesterday's episode, but with scheduling changes thanks to international breaks, they are back-to-back -back games coming up. We do have a few players injured or just about to recover from injuries. Roberto Puncic and Matt Olasunde have overcame minor niggles, so they're available for today's episode, but players who won't be available for the first game anyway, Felix Metcher pulled his thigh a little while ago, so he's out for another 5-10 to 10 days, but very close to coming back. Gianluca Busio had a minor injury, a pulled groin, he should be available for the second game of today's episode, and Alan Polito probably won't feature today, because he is still very light on match sharpness, or he will be once he returns fully anyway, but he is finally nearly back from his torn calf muscle, which happened late last year so we're nearly getting back to a full complement of players and have a good amount of squad depth here at Sporting Kansas City but first up today we are taking on Club America who currently find themselves down in 13th through the Mexican outfit this should be a game that we're capable of winning and we'll come back shortly from the Estadio Azteca and run you guys through the team sheets and here are the team sheets for the first game of today's episode Club America on the left, a few names that I recognise there, mostly the goalkeeper, Guillermo Akoa, but this should be a team that we're capable of taking down on our best form. Anyway, in terms of us, because of the injuries that we do have, Doyle Hayes is in there for Busio at the moment, Gaddy kind of covering the box-to-box -box midfield role on the bench, and in terms of the left wing for Metcha, Shaloi gets a start, and Ozzy Cisnados is back in the first team and on the bench as well. 17 minutes gone, we've got the first highlight of the game and it is a Club America thrown and a good area of the pitch for them and they will look to strike first in this home game for them. But as I said, if we can keep picking up points in the league, we might give ourselves a chance to at least win the league and earn a chance at promotion. Good slide tackle there from a young go, but as I said, we would still need luck and other results. Johnny F and Russell hitting that form forward to the man in form. Yusuf and Makoko, tight angle and forces a really good save there. Out of a Koa going for that top right corner. Decent early chance, but still it remains nil all after 20 minutes. 22 minutes gone now, and we have a throw in down the other end of the pitch to where Club America were before, and Wintel to Olasunde on the edge of the box puts a ball in. 
trying to find one of our men. We can't, and we nearly get positioned back there, but Club America are back in it, and we, they nearly get on the attack there, but luckily for us, Sepp Vandenberg will get things back. Makoko goes round the goalkeeper from the long pass from Daniel Shallowell, I believe that was, and after 23 minutes, we get the lead, and of course, it's Yusufa Makoko back in goal-scoring form. It was Sepp Vandenberg with the interception on the Club America counter-attack, plays the ball to Shallowy, picks out Makoko, is able to just take that round the keeper somewhat, slot that away in the bottom left corner. He is back scoring goals again, and it is 1-0 after 23 minutes, and we have an immediate highlight straight off the back of that goal. Hopefully it's not an instant reply here for Club America, but we're at least giving ourselves a chance to try and keep this nice run of form going, although we do kick the ball there straight back to Club America, and Sanchez tries to play that over to Hernandez and picks him out quite well. Ball over to the other side. They are exposing the whip of us here, our narrow defensive lines quite nicely at the moment. A good save there, though, from Melia at a very tight angle and at close proximity as well, and it keeps it to 1-0 after 26 minutes. And that is half time in this game. Not much happening in the second part of the first half, as we'll tell Vandenberg to ease off tackles, and unfortunately that means that the stats have disappeared. We'll just try and bring these back for you guys momentarily. We're not able to get the XG graph back, but in the end, I think that's a pretty good first half from us. Only a goal up, but we are certainly dominating things here. I'm pretty happy with how things are going. Now, unfortunately, can't get those other usual graphs and whatnot that we have at halftime up. Thanks for the Vandenberg ease off tackles thing that I did there. So apologies for that, but happy with how this is going. No halftime changes as we hold a 1-0 lead here in this league game against Club America. 46 minutes gone here and we have a throw in a good area of the pitch. Johnny Russell and Wintle with a ball over the top. Daniel Shalloy, tight angle and squeezes that past the car. He got a hand to it, but I think he's only managed to parry that into his own net. And we go 2-0 up shortly after halftime. Exactly what we were after, getting a cushion goal. And it is going quite well for us here in Mexico today. Wintle putting a nice ball over for Daniel Shalloy. First time finish. Just able to make the most of a car, perhaps being a touch. Out of position, a good attempted save, but can't keep it out. And we're 2-0 up shortly after halftime. 57 minutes gone here, and we have another throw in, and more or less the same position from where we scored before. Doyle Hayes to Shallow. He hits that ball back, which is interesting, and maybe not a good decision, as now it's Club America on the counter-attack through Medina, and he's more or less one-on-one -on -one with the keeper here. Tight angle, but a good save there from Tim Melia. And with a half hour to go, it still remains 2-0. And into added time, we're about to go. We made changes throughout the second half thanks to tired bodies but in the end there wasn't much point bringing you guys those because nothing happened after that a very quiet second half after the shallow week goal and that was a pretty solid 2-0 win a game that we thoroughly dominated twice as dominant as Club America you could say looking at the stats and that's exactly how we wanted to start today's episode with another win in the league Yusuf Makoko getting back in goal scoring form along with Daniel Shallowy and we pick up a very solid 2-0 win and with nothing in between now and the second game of today's episode which is against Santos Laguna we'll come back shortly and run you guys through the team sheets for that game and we do have TV coverage for the second game of today's episode now Ayongo has gone for a week long holiday so that means that Louis Martins gets a start in this game and we've brought Jalen Lindsay onto the bench for left back cover as there you see the Santos Laguna team who are currently find themselves in the top half of the table, and there is the table going into this game, and we have just closed the gap on those top few teams a little bit, but more or less the same team as the first game today with that change at left back, and hopefully we can get another good result here at home against Santos Laguna. Seven minutes gone here, and it's an early corner for Santos Laguna to the far post, and that's a really good chance there for the opposition, but they just put it wide, and still it remains nil all. And that is half time, very quiet first half with slightly edged things Stat-wise, but only the one highlight that was worth showing you guys. So not an overly exciting game. This one will make one change at halftime. Sasha Jala on a yellow heart and a yellow card. So Eli Sanchez can come on for him. But give the boys a bit of a rack up at halftime and hopefully get a little bit more out of them as we start the second half. Still locked up here at Nilal. 47 minutes gone. It's a throw to us in a very similar position to those ones we had in the second half of the first game of today's episode. That ball Locked there from Johnny Russell, but Vandenberg tidies things up for us, and we look to drive forward again, and that's Johnny Russell on the end of that Vandenberg ball. Ball played forward. Somehow it falls to Yusuf and Makoko, an absolute mess at the back there from Santos Laguna, and the luck just seems to be falling our way 
since we bought the German wonder kid here and we go 1-0 up. And as you can see in the bottom left corner there, that takes us up to third on the live table. It was a ball from Johnny Russell that the defence really should have been able to deal with. They didn't. They got a little bit messy. Not much communication there by the looks of it. Yusuf and Makoko with a simple finish. And just after half time, we're 1-0 up. Okay, 55 minutes gone here. We're going to make our second substitution. Ryan Wintle not having a great game. 6.4 rating. The Yellow Hearts will bring Remy Walter on for him, but still 1 0 up with 35 minutes to go. Up to the hour mark, and it's a throw here for Santos Laguna as they look to get this back at all square, but we are able to deal with that first ball through Andrew Fontas, but it's now Ron Caglia back to Quackman, and they do look to get on the attack here to Santos Laguna, a team that we do have to play. One more time before the end of the season. That might even be coming up in tomorrow's episode. Herman there puts the ball across for Correa. Really nice finish there from Javier Correa. And rather deservedly, it has to be said, because it's been a pretty even game to date. They do get it back to a draw at one all. It was good build up here from Santos Laguna. Ron Caglia up for Herman. We're defending narrowly. They were able to take advantage of that. And Correa with a really nice finish. Might have even been from the trailing lead there to put that in the bottom left corner, and it is back to all square with a half hour to go. 63 minutes gone, shortly after Santos Laguna equalised, and they have a goal kick, and they do get possession back from that, and it's Valdez down the right-hand side. Hopefully we can deal with this better than we did before, and back to Valdez, finds Cervantes, or tries to. We head that away, and Johnny F. and Russell is on the counter-attack. Can he play Makoko through? He does, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, more or less, but a good save there from the Santos Laguna keeper, and in fact, Johnny Russell Takes it out for a goal kick, a good chance there, but still one all with 25 to go. 74 minutes gone here. We're going to make our last substitution. Matt Olasunde playing pretty well, but down to a red heart. And we've got some games coming up, which we need to try and keep this league form going for. So Graham Zussi to come on for him. And it does still remain one all with a quarter of an hour to go. 94 minutes gone, the last minute of added time in this game. And Santos Laguna with a throw and trying to pinch this result. We head that away. And Doyle Hayes on the counter finds Makoko. What can he do here? Very tight angle. One defender tries to beat the goalkeeper at the near post. Didn't have many other options, truth be told, but puts it wide. And that will be that. It's a one-all draw, which will slightly harm our chances of trying to win the league. But in the end, Santos Laguna are a pretty good team. As I said, one of the toughest ones that we've got to play throughout the rest of the season. And we've got them one more time in tomorrow's episode, more than likely. As well, it was a fairly even game, not much separating the teams stat-wise. We did have a significantly higher XG, I say significantly, 0.6 or whatever it is, but in the end just couldn't quite make the most of it, and we escaped with a one-all draw here at home against Santos Laguna. And league table-wise, we do go back down to fourth, but now only 10 points behind the teams at the top of the table, and with those two games in hand as well, so not without a chance here still if we can win those games in hand that we do have would only be four points behind. So certainly not going in the wrong direction. So not a terrible result for us there. Not as bad as it first would appear. But two decent results in today's episode. And we'll have a decent launching pad to start tomorrow's episode from provided we get decent results in between now and then. But we'll come back shortly and run you guys through this year's youth intake. And we are back in the inbox in mid-March. And our youth intake has happened. And as you can see, it's another pretty good one. We were suggested that it would be a golden generation and it's looking somewhat likely again to have a quick run through of these guys. I won't try and go into it as much depth as I did last season, partly because that was quite a long one when we did it last season. Also, I've got an electrician coming around the house shortly to fix a light, so I need to try and do this a little bit quicker than I usually would. But up the top, Alejandro Alvarez is the first one, a centre midfielder, five-star potential, one-star current ability, or he has a couple of green stats it looks like a good one for the future definitely might be one who gets a little bit of game time if that current ability does improve next up is apparently the pick of them a center back Brad Izaevsky one and a half star current ability five star potential not the tallest so not too sure about him as a center back we might actually train him up to be a right back instead which he kind of is already listed as but no overly eye-catching stats there but with that five star potential and Decent enough current ability. Could be another one who could end up being a very good player for us here at Sporting Kansas City. Next up, Billy Martin. He has one-star current ability, five-star potential for this winger. No stats there that are overly eye-catching apart from the aggression, but obviously with that five-star potential, could be a very good player for us 
in the future, even with that unsporting personality. Could be a very good shithousery player there for us in the future. Billy Martinez. Next up, we've got James Nelson. He's another midfielder. So after not getting too many midfielders in last year's youth intake, it looks like this year's one is going to make up for that somewhat again. At the moment, no stats there that are overly eye-catching, but with that five-star potential, no doubt he is going to turn into a fairly decent player here at Sporting Kansas City. Next up is Alejandro Rodriguez making our way down to the four-star potential players, and it is another midfield of very good natural fitness, which is nice with the Gagan Press style that we do use here, so he should be a useful addition to the club. Next up, we've got Michael Moore. He is probably going to end up being trained up as a striker because that does look his most natural position. Very good determination, which is nice. He should make his way to that four-star potential driven personality. Decent enough on both feet, so could be a good striker in the future for us there. Could Michael Moore. Patrick Harris is up next. Very good bravery and natural fitness, which leads me to believe he could end up being a better left back than a left winger, but we'll see what we do with him when we do sign him up on a contract. One and a half star current ability, so one of the highest ones that we've got in this current youth intake. Four star potential, fairly professional personality. Another player who's decent on both feet. A good prospect for us there. Next up is another centre back, Aiton Yehezkil. He is 1.75 metres tall, so not too sure if he is actually going to be a centre back. Maybe we need to try and slide him forward into a defensive midfield role, but he does have some good stats, teamwork and aggression. Decent potential three and a half stars. A little bit worried about the height if he's going to be a centre back, but another fairly promising player out of this youth intake. Next up, we have a left back with very good natural fitness, which is nice to see, and that is Ila Kaplani, three and a half star potential, one star current ability. Unambitious, which is a little bit concerning, his determination really low, but with that potential ability, We'll probably still sign this 15-year-old for left back in the future. Next up, we have a Brazilian striker coming through the youth intake here at Sporting Kansas City, and that is Danilo. You can see he's already got decent finishing, dribbling first touch. He actually looks quite well suited for the advanced forward role that we do use. He's no Anthony Reyes by any means, but already has some decent stats there for us. It could very well be a very useful squad player in the future there. Could Danilo? Next up, yet another striker who can also play on the left wing. His stats not quite as good as Danilo's, but with that potential, is a player that we'll probably grab hold of in Dante Vazquez, who has very strong on his left foot sporting personality, which matches the club name, I suppose. So, yeah, probably a player that will sign there as well, Dante Vazquez. Next up, we have a goalkeeper. So we're getting one goalkeeper out of this youth intake, and that is Mark Chalaski. Three and a half star potential, one star current ability, professional personality. Decent enough stats there, good reflexes for a 15 year old. So could be one for the future as a squad player there. And then we get down to probably the last player from this youth intake that we will be signing in Santiago Rodriguez, an attacking midfielder. So might train him up as an advanced playmaker for the future eventually. But three star potential, one star current ability, very good left foot, not so much a right foot, but. A couple of decent stats there in the 14s, and we may as well give him a crack and tries long-range free kicks as well. So that is always a decent string to have for your So he'll probably join us from this youth intake as well. Well, Santiago Rodriguez, and we'll quickly run through the rest even quicker than we did those other ones. Chris Aubrey is a winger who's more of a midfield winger, which we don't really use here anyway. So probably not going to be signing him with that two and a half star potential and because he doesn't really fit any of the positions that we use here. At SKC, next up, James Dolich, an American with, an, again, two and a half star potential. Is a defender, and he's 1.91 centimeters tall, so maybe I might take a punt on this guy just in case he does turn out a little bit better than first four, because his bravery is quite high, too. I do like a tall center back with decent bravery and decent jumping reach, so maybe I am going to actually take a punt on this guy, but we'll see. That potential might suggest otherwise in the end. I'm not too sure what I'll do with this guy, but... Might be a player who's a bit better than he first looks there, James Dolich. And to round out the youth intake, Adrian Wilson, one and a half star potential. Not a player that we're going to be interested in, especially with a temperamental personality. But that's our youth intake. Another pretty good one here at Sporting Kansas City. We've been pretty lucky so far. And some players who might be making some appearances in the first team come next season if they do develop nicely. And as you can see above that too, Ambrose Iongo back from his weak rest that he had prior to that Santos Laguna game. Maybe 
we should have tried to keep hold of him until the end of that game because as you can see we've got a big gap before our next game now 16 days after this youth intake but he needed a rest and we thought we may as well make the most of it when it was down to a light schedule rather than later in the season when we might need as many players as possible if we are going to be trying to make a title drive here at Sporting Kansas City but that will do for today's episode fifth in the league only 10 points behind the top couple with two games in hand so certainly still in that race which is really good considering the poor start we had to the season here in terms of the next episode we're going to be coming back more or less straight off the end of this one I think we're going to take on both the Santos teams because they are teams in and around us Santos up in fourth and Santos Laguna again not too far behind us and they did get a draw off us at home as well so hopefully we can get some revenge on those guys and try and keep ourselves in the hunt to potentially earn an upset league title in our first season in this Brasileiro Serie A. Ah, but if you did enjoy today's episode, it was a little bit of a busy one. Hopefully I didn't rush through things too much with this electrician coming who hasn't arrived yet, although I might be able to hear his car now, so I better wrap this up. But if you did enjoy this episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you enjoy the series here on the channel and are looking forward to more Football Manager content, also hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. And until the next time I see you for the Santos double, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.